thank. I would like to thank the Borough Council for the time tonight to present my Eagle Project. Um, my proposed Eagle Project is finishing and enhancing the trail on the Borough Springs property that goes from Round Top Road to Route 202. A more detailed plan of the project should have been given to you by Mr. Suriano. Um, currently, there is a rough cut path. However, there is many impassable sections due to large fallen trees. Additionally, there are sections uh, of the path of steep inclines where I would install switchbacks for easy accessibility. Uh, there is one part of the path that occasionally floods, which is where I would install a raised walkway. My plan include, um, also includes making the trail easier to navigate by removing invasive species, adding trailblazers, and using local and indigenous plants to naturally mark and beautify the trail. As you can see in my initial work plan, I am performing the work in phases. Depending on the pro when the project starts, I am making accommodations for social distancing so that we can perform the work safely. I am currently expecting the project to cost about $1,500 which I will fund through a series of donations from local providers and fundraising if necessary. Uh, the initial plan was approved by Troop 150. Um, I have worked Mr. Birnbaum, a, a member of the Open Space Committee, to scope out the project. Mrs. McFadden, the chair of the Open Space Committee, circulated the proposal to the entire committee for review and forwarded it to the borough administrator to get on tonight's meeting. If approved tonight, the Regional Boy Scout Council uh, must approve before I can begin. And uh, thanks for your time this evening. And does anyone have any questions about the proposal? Uh, anybody? Questions? Um, hey, Kyle, how long was the how long is the trail proposed to be? Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, about half a mile. Well, I was wondering how long the trail uh, was yeah, proposed to be. Yeah, about a half a mile long. Uh, half a mile. Yeah. It's a half a mile up and a half a mile down. <laughs> but I think it's excellent that the yeah, uh, years space space the trail and down. the process is there. Uh, One at a time. We got too many people talking. Who's talking? Okay, did some, oh, just, I was just going to say, I walked the Laurelwood Trail a few years ago with uh, Ed. John, and this would be a nice addition to that, nice extension of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was. I don't know if I, my, I'm getting a warning that my, my internet is un intermittent, so maybe I'll pause for a second. Okay. Um, I wanted to say that the project seems uh, like a good project uh, from my perspective. I didn't know, and I would congratulate you for engaging already with the Open Space Committee. I didn't know if there was a role for consultation from the uh, Environmental Commission uh, as well. If that made sense, uh, you could use advice from the Environmental Commission uh, in terms of things to look out for while you're doing the project as well. Well, there's also, I think uh, Peter Birnbaum is also on the Environmental Commission, isn't he? So um, he's a good crossover between the two committees and uh, probably maybe recreation should be involved a little bit in it as well. But um, it's a it's a really nice path. It's it's goes up, but there's a couple there's in the middle. There's a nice level area, which would be nice sitting. Um, so. Do we need to do anything formal here, Jack, or? Um... No, I think if you uh, give um, the consensus of the council at this point. Okay, um, I think we're all on board with this. I think it'll be, it's a great okay. project. Um, yes. And, okay, keep us posted as you progress and let us know if you need any help along the way. Okay, thank you, Kyle, and lots of luck with this. Thank you. Okay. Good, Good job, luck, Kyle. Kyle. Thanks. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Mayor? Yes. You good? Okay. Mayor, he just had one thing he's trying to say. Uh, okay. I, met, I met with Mrs. Franny from the creation before uh, she retired, so I just want to let you know. Oh, great. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. Um, oh, thank next. you, guys. Okay. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Um, our next presentation is John Zabo, who is our planner.
And we had asked him, um, those of you may remember, we had purchased the property on 271 Minebrook Road. And we had asked um, John Zabo to look at where we could possibly subdivide because we have uh, several people interested in different pieces of the property and we wanna set aside property for open space. So we wanted to know how best we could use that property. So um, John, are you there? He's muted. Is he muted? Oh. I will unmute him. I'll, yes. Let me find, I'll, I'll find can him. You, this, can uh, you hear me now? There you go. Yes. You hear me now? Yeah. Okay. And we did get uh, a you. drawing from you. Thank you. Yes, uh, we prepared at your request a conceptual, and it is simply a conceptual, and I'll explain why it's conceptual in a moment, but what we did was taking into account the zoning and the desires of the town to maintain a large portion as open space, a, a possibly a, an adjoining property owner had expressed interest in acquiring a two to three acre portion of that property to uh, add additional acreage to theirs, that would be lot 27, and then possibly subdividing off a, a leg for, uh, to someone for future subdivision uh, residential development. What we did was taking into account the zoning. We laid out the lots such that everything conforms to the current zoning. Uh, lot 27 is proposed to be conveyed a 2.64 acre uh, portion of the larger tract. If you look in the uh, conceptual design, it does square off the property as best could be done. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And it's actually, um, it's a, it's actually a, a good conveyance for that lot. The, um, the, there's an 8.68 acre portion that could be sold off by the borough. Uh, all of it subdividable or it could be- Sorry, Mr. Zabo, can you, it has a historic, can you define what, what conveyance means? Speak up. Can you define you what conveyance means? Convey to conveyance is to convey is to 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 give over something to give to somebody, and in this case, in real estate, it would be by deed by subdivision. So that would go so with lot twenty-seven, or property, it would stay with lot six. No, there. This is this is where I'm going to get into. You're going. This is conceptual. In order to subdivide, the next step if the council, if the governing body's on board with the way this is laid out, you would have to engage a license, New Jersey licensed land surveyor to physically lay out the meets and bounds of the properties that you are going to be then selling. So that 2.64 acres that you see in the corner would be subdivision. And you would convey that to that parcel through subdivision and it would no longer be yours, it would be theirs. They would acquire it from the borough for just compensation for the value of the property. Same thing would be for the 8.68 acre sub, uh, portion on the bottom. There would be a subdivision line that would where the dotted lines go. Mm -hmm. It would be by meets and bounds description. It would have to be done by, again, a licensed surveyor. And then you would sell that off by deed after it's approved for, by subdivision by the planning board. So conveyance would be by deed through subdivision. Got it. And it, the, the idea I thought was to sell those two parts, parcels off for those portions of the parcel and the remainder lot that would remain uh, for the borough would be 19 acres of open space. Uh, I noticed there is a structure that would be left on that property. The options for the borough would be to either demolish it or keep it as a visitor center or some kind of multi-purpose use uh, to benefit the community as you see fit. A uh, question, John, um, on the conceptual, yes. Your, the um, entrance to the property is going with the eight point whatever acres. Yeah. Um, so that would require Correct. another entrance Correct. onto 202 for our piece, for the open we space. We kept piece. the, you would, yeah, you would need to develop your own driveway to act. You have to, um, <clears throat> you would have to provide some kind of access drive to the parcel. You, I presume at some point, uh, you would want to have uh, some kind of a uh, community use put to this property. We don't know what that is, or I don't know what that is. And it, yeah, it would include access, trails, possibly a small parking area, gravel. Uh, you would have to develop the lot as you desire. 
we, the line is drawn at an angle that way to preserve the existing driveway to the historic home. That's why it's driven. It's, plus also to keep the setbacks so that it would comply to zoning. Okay. John, it's hard to see here on this overlay. Um, yep, go ahead. Sorry, I just want, people are asking if there's a way that they can see the site map that John is referring to. Anthony, is it on the borough webpage? And it's a very big file. No, it's not, it is not on the borough webpage, no. Okay, so there's we, we no way for other people and to see what it is that webpage, John's referencing. And, and not that. Yeah, okay. I can so, so John, on this overlay, it looks like, and now look, you can't see where I'm pointing with my mouse. Um, is that a parking lot that's about halfway up the existing um, driveway? And I, I guess I'm wondering if, look, I've no, never been back it. in this lot. Does it make sense for us to go walk this lot to see where these various lines are drawn? And because um, obviously this is going to be, a, you know, probably a several week conversation, right? It's, it's um, uh, my, my impression is it's not a parking lot. It's just a, a paved area for visitors, guests to the home. It's a single family house now with a second uh, principal dwelling on it and a accessory other structure on the property that we're subdividing off. It's not a formal parking lot, uh, but it goes to the house. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a driveway and a, a circular drive, and then there's a big field beyond it. Um, Chad, at some point we could go and visit and you can get a sense of what the property is. Um, a number of us have been there a number of times. So I think it's, um, worth having the council visit that hasn't seen it. Ah, there you go. There you yeah, go. no, I think so, especially since I know this is gonna be an area of concern for Brandstetter once they get going. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I'd like to, myself, this is Jeff Hamm, I'd like to relook at that 2.6 acre parcel. I'm familiar with the front end far better than I am from the back end of this lot. Um, yeah, the back end is really um, just woods. And it, it evens it out if you can yeah you see the back corner it kind of squares it off so what, yeah, what would the zoning be r1a r1a the, and this the, was designed go ahead was it's it r1a three? and this was designed to three acre zoning and it was designed to um keep all the to not require any relief from what we could tell Without What's the advantage? Scenario. I've heard I've heard several times it mentioned that it squares things off. What's the advantage of that, if any? I mean, to me, it, well, uh, I, I, I don't it's see the, much. the property owner want, that is in lot 27 is interested in acquiring that piece to even out his lot. Well, that I understand. But uh, if that's something, even though it's wooded, if that's something that we, we felt that, um, again, in referencing Brandstetter, that uh, we could make use of, then that certainly would take some consideration to give up something we just paid for. Well, uh, if, if we sell it, we effectively wouldn't be paying for it. Uh, well, yeah, I got that part. Yeah. And the, and the other thing is that um, I think the topography of the land, it's, it's, I don't think it's actually like a flat space and it is, it's like at the back corner of the existing property. It is heavily wooded as the mayor already indicated, but your concerns are valid and we should look at it. Yeah, how how large is that lot twenty seven? What size? What's the size of that? Um, I don't have the exact acreage. I could look it up. Uh, it looks about. I mean, if two six four is the other triangle, maybe it's three or three and a half. I think it's three and a half. Three and a half seems to be the the right number in my mind. I seem to remember they needed a certain amount of acreage so that they can gain some status in terms of farmland assessment. Uh, oh. But, Interesting. That's, that's 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 in their letter. It's all laid out in their their proposal to the council. Okay. And the, you said that the zone was R one A. Is that for all of the? the is yeah, that for yeah. lot twenty seven and lot six and the eight acres? Or yes, yes. Okay. Because even if the area is heavily wooded, I I thought and correct me if I'm wrong. I I remembered that Ed English had made a presentation about our deer mitigation efforts and that this would be acquired. A land to add to that that the parcels that we already have where we allow hunters for uh, deer mitigation so um, you know that may, may be favorable to the borough to 
keep it that way. Uh, I guess I'm so where are we in the process? What are potential next steps? Um, you know, we're seeing the, the subdivision for the first time tonight. This is where does this go for here and what's the decision process? The purpose of this was to give the governing body an idea of how you could parcel out the property. Um, you can do with it as you please. The idea was that you purchase the entire parcel. Lot 27 has expressed the desire to purchase uh, a, a two to three acre portion of that. That's a policy decision on the part of the council, uh, whether or not you want to do that. And there's some discussion, obviously, about that. The bottom part was to sell off possibly for future subdivision, I presume, so that you could recoup, recoup some of the cost of the acquisition. And then the center or the majority of the lot would be preserved as open space. The next steps would be to finalize, is this the configuration that makes the most sense from a planning perspective? It did, that's why it was laid out the way it did. The lines uh, square off lot 27. Uh, yes, um, you're giving up land, but you, you try to create lots that are perpendicular with lines that are perpendicular to each other rather than with these obtuse angles. So we did that and plus it, was, um, it, it meets the two to three acre request that the adjoining property owner was looking for, that doesn't mean you need to convey it. So the next steps would be to finalize, this was to give you a picture of what it would look like. The next step would be to finalize where you want those lines, get a land surveyor and decide to what extent you wanna subdivide this and create a subdivision application. What's the access to lot 27? I, I don't see it, the access off of Crestview. There, How do they there, get there? It's, it's, there's a, a shared driveway that you see a little portion of it I, I can't move it right in the corner where that's okay. being pointed at. There's a driveway that comes in off the road. Okay. It doesn't have direct frontage on the street, but it has a uh, driveway. I mean, my personal opinion on this, I think we've discussed the, I'm going to use the word mansion ubiquitously, the, the place that's in the 8.68 acres as a opportunity to subdivide and sell off that place and recoup a lot of the expense for this property. I think we need to evaluate the rest of it and figure out, well, what, what would we use it for? Um, and if we decided to sell additional pieces, what would the financial revenue be from it? Um, Chad, if I can just interrupt, I'm sorry, yeah. I don't want to cut you off, but um, this is really part of what Brandstetter will be doing. Yes. For us is looking at this property. I think what, what I, had asked to have this possible subdivision is because we have two people interested in the mansion swimming pool part and and a resident interested in the other part. So I, I just wanted you to get a sense of how that could possibly work. Um, I think we would leave this to Brandstetter to really help us finalize it, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Okay. I think that's a very good proposal. The only thing I would note is that, you know, it would be helpful for us to have this wrapped up uh, within about a year of when we made the original purchase. So that's, I think, 10 or 11 months remaining, if I remember correctly. So uh, to the extent that Brandstetter is going to be involved in it, um, I want to make sure that they support our, our overall timeline yeah. as it relates to uh, this particular project. Um, so that's the only thing I would say. I mean, is there, is there... Sorry, Chad, go ahead. Yeah, you go ahead, Gina. I, I was just going to ask if there was a reason for the for the time frame. I know that you know we initially bought this property, or at least if memory serves, we bought this property with um, borough funding because we were allowed to then subdivide. And once we get to the final um, acreage, then and then we've subdivided and sold off, then we we're going to convert it to open space and use the open space funding. Is that why there's a time frame, Tom? Right, so we bought it with borough funding. So uh, with the borough funding, there's a, a small amount of carrying costs that we have associated with that. Whereas if we bought it with, uh, with the open, once we buy it with the open space funds, since we have existing funds in that account, you know, we would not be paying any carrying cost um, for using the open space funds. And of course there would be no cost related to the portions that were sold off either. So uh, that's, that's the only objective. I mean, we don't have any, um, we could go beyond 12 months. It's just that we're pro we planned that it would be done within 12 months. If it takes 14 months or 16 months, it'll be slightly more expensive, but we're not talking about huge, huge amounts of money. It's a small difference. And the, the reason that we used um, 
borough funds is if we had used open space funds to buy the property, we would not be allowed to subdivide it. That is correct. And then we would have to deal with, um, you know, a swimming pool, a mansion, a, you know, a lot of the other things. And since we had people that were interested in that piece of the property, we thought that was a better way to go. Gives us more flexibility. Yeah. Uh, I'll just give you my, my personal opinion, and this is an opinion. Um, I know that we've had potential buyers for the the mansion and the pool, um, which, from what I understand, their offer was was reasonable and considerable. Um, I, I'd be willing to move forward on that, and I think then the rest of it we have evaluated to see what we want to do with it. I'd hate to short our plan because we made a choice now that didn't have as much revenue tied up in it. Well, not only that, I'd like to know the, uh, the economic impact of the, the 2.64 acres that uh, if it becomes Likewise. a farmland assessment, then what does that do in terms of the taxable rating on that lot? Except Agreed. Agreed. Hey, any other questions on that? Well, is it possible to move forward with the with the eight acres, the mansion kind of subdivision, without moving forward with the other pieces of it at this point? Or yes. No? Yes, so it just uh, requires yeah. to go before the planning board twice. Now, now with respect to the, the parcel that the mansion is on, we'd have to go through a public bidding process in order to sell that. With respect to the smaller parcel, if you decide to sell that off because it's undersized and can't be built on, the public bidding process can be uh, limited to adjoining property owners. Okay. Just, can just, I, I, would, I would move then to, to move forward on the first. I'm, yeah, we, can, we can actually get the survey done. Yes, that, that, that's fine with me. The only thing, other question I would ask in conjunction with this is, if we subdivide the, the both sides at the same time, so we do this as one action, are we obligated to sell the 2.64 or we can decide down the road to sell it or not? No, we would just be able to because we'd have an approved subdivision from the planning board. Okay. So we're, so we're not why not just go ahead with the whole thing no. and we can always yep. pull back on the 264 if nobody likes it. Right. I think it's yeah. a good the idea. Thing is we can't, I'm sorry. We can't reimburse ourselves from Green Acres until a final decision is made. Because once you encumber the property, whatever remains of the property with Green Acres restrictions, then you know there's no turning back. So, so Jack, say, say it again in, in English. So if we sell off these eight acres and right. we don't sell off the other, are we now, have we now, you were use the word encumbered. Have we now limited our decision-making process? No, not until no. we reimburse ourselves with open space. Right. And green acres. Okay, right. I now understand. So the That's timing has to be very, you have to be very careful with the timing so that when you want to be, you do not accept any, as Jack has said, any green acre monies until you've decided what to do with the two parcels. If you if you take the money now, it'll become automatically part of your Rossi. You'll you'll not be able to do anything. So just okay. make sure you're aware of the timing. Is so we have to about. make a decision on both before the the time strikes midnight. It's before you accept the money. That's correct. Right before we take any money. Okay. Uh, a quick question though uh, the, for the. The eight acres. I, I think it was always the the idea that we don't want to be landlords, and that um, we would look for a, a buyer to the, as Chad calls it, uh, the the mansion and pool. Yes. Um, if we do sell that off, uh, could then the 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 new owner subdivide that? Yeah, possibly. Uh, they would have to conform to all the R one A three acre zoning requirements. It's not a guarantee about the number of lots at all. That's so they could on technically part. divide it in half then, if half or in into two parcels if they ultimately wanted to, and it was passed through the planning board. Depending, yes, on zoning. Uh, can, are we allowed to put any covenants in the sale that would say they wouldn't do that? We we can't put stricter requirements in the deed of conveyance than the zoning standards. Is the is there a deed of conveyance related to the eight point six eight acres? That said subdivision. It didn't say conveyance. But it will be if we sell it. If we sell it, we can't put we can't put covenants in there that they can't subdivide it. We can only hold them to the zoning regulations. Okay, thank which, you. Which which maintains three acres minimum, so they could divide it into two pieces if approved. Right. Possible. Yeah. Although it's yeah, so um, not, uh, sorry, as long as we're not I'm obligated gonna, to the two point whatever that was, the, uh, the, the back end part of the property, then uh, yeah, I think we, we move ahead. Uh, um, 
I have, I have a lot more thoughts about that one. Okay. Um, thank you, John, for your You're input welcome. on that. Good You're welcome. You. Um, Same here. And we will uh, probably talk to you again about it. <laughs> okay. Very good. Good night. Good night. Hi, John. Good night. Okay. Um, now I'm going to read this statement on regarding the old Quarry Road uh, Associates litigation. Um, I, I think Anthony's <clears throat> going to put it up yeah, we'll on the screen, but I have a copy so I can read it if you don't have to scroll it. But if you want to read along, we're going to put it up. I will, I will get it up there in a second. Let me see here. There should be up now. There we go. Okay, good evening. Tonight, we have an update for the public as well as a decision to make regarding pending litigation with respect to the proposed materials recovery facility on Old Quarry Road. <clears throat> the original application to amend the industrial zone ordinance was approved on August 10th, 2015 by the members of the borough council who were in office at that time. The ordinance was prepared by the borough planner at the direction of the planning board and forwarded to the council with the board's recommendation to approve. In August of 2018, the council received a review copy of the New Jersey uh, DEP application submitted by Old Quarry Road Associates for the materials recovery facility. In August of 2018, the council in office at that time reviewed the information and voted to repeal the 2015 ordinance allowing a materials recovery facility as an approved use. Old Quarry Road Associates then filed a lawsuit against the borough. The council then retained outside attorneys with an expertise in both BPU permitting and land use issues to represent the borough in the litigation. As we began the litigation process with our attorneys, we were confronted with a choice to pursue this in court or to negotiate towards a settlement. After a detailed review of the history and facts in the case, our attorneys advised us that a negotiated settlement could be the most successful path. Their legal analysis was based on decisions made in 2015 by the Borough Council and the resulting actions taken by the Old Quarry Road Associates in the time between 2015 and 2018. Based on our attorney's assessment and input from the case judge, we were advised that there could be a significant risk in pursuing the litigation path. We would like to note that the circumstances leading to the original approval of site predate this current council, and we are trying to make the best of the difficult situation we now face. Based on the totality of the case facts and legal advice, the council agreed to develop terms for a negotiated settlement. During this process, the council had to consider the litigation path, which, should we be unsuccessful, we would not only incur additional legal fees, but we would lose any control over the operation of the facility. By choosing to negotiate, our goal was to gain some net benefit to the borough. In that negotiation, which lasted several months, we were able to achieve some concessions. These are highlighted most importantly by a reduction in guarantee that truck traffic will only increase by 24 trips per day versus the original proposed 64 trips, a reduction in intake hours from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday, and from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. changed to 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. on Saturday. The facility will not be open on Sundays. The borough will receive $1.50 per ton of material versus the 50 cents originally proposed with an estimated $45,000 revenue per year versus 15,000. The facility will be open to Burnsville residents free of charge at least once a year. The facility will not have a tub grinder. Materials to be accepted and processed will only be those set forth in NJDEP 13 and 13C. No automobiles, trucks, trailers, large vehicle parts, tires, or kitchen waste. Speed limits near the Rose Bowl will be five miles an hour. Landscaping will be provided at the entrance. And a bridge will be constructed over the creek adjacent to the Rose Bowl for pedestrian safety. 
Tonight is the first discussion of this matter with the public in order to maximize our ability to negotiate the best deal for Burnsville and protect the confidentiality required by litigation. Our lawyers advised us that this matter should not be discussed in public until the appropriate time, which is this evening. Again, we think it is important to state that this current council did not feel that this materials recovery facility was good for our town, especially as it was proposed. However, we believe that the risk of litigation coupled with an inability to get any concessions if we were to lose in court could be worse. So tonight we are considering what is in the best interest of the borough. Um, okay, you could take that down or unless people wanna still see it. Um, and I guess we'll put this on the website as well. So at this point, uh, we will have an open session for the public um, to express their opinions. We ask that uh, comments are li limited to three minutes because we have quite a few people in the audience. Um, please, uh, at this point, we're not, it's really for you to tell us what you think. We're not gonna have a, a, an open debate on the subject, but we'd like to know what our residents think. And uh, please, when you wanna speak, raise your hand if you go to the participant screen. There's a little symbol there to raise your hand. And then, um, and again, this may not be on this statement. This is an open session. So if there's something else you wanna address the council about, feel free to do it at this time as well. So if you just mark uh, to raise your hand, Anthony will unmute you and uh, let you speak and he will time you um, so that we can make sure everybody gets an opportunity to speak. Okay, I see, uh, I think Jessica- Walker. Mayor, could I ask a question? Yes. But would it be possible for our IT team to put the statement up and make it available for people? I, I know that you read it and that's quite good for informing people, but if they just wanted it as a point of reference, if we were having a face-to-face -face meeting tonight, we probably would have a hard copy for people to pick up and be able to reference during the discussion. Is there is there any way for our IT team to provide that for people tonight? I have no idea. I mean, they're not here. They're not on the call. It, it um, was, I, I think it was posted on, on the bubble. Um, and I know that's not an ideal situation. Um, Cheryl, Martin's, it, Cheryl Martin's just posted that you can post a document in chat. You can post oh, a yeah. document in chat. Okay. okay. I can copy it. It's a Word document that I have. I, it may not have the bullet points properly, but I can copy it in the in, in Word and paste it in the chat box if that helps. Sounds well, like a good I idea. Have, I, have a, I have a PDF. Do you think I can put it in as a PDF? Maybe, that work better? It'd be nice if the file could go onto the chat. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. that would be great. Um, I don't know how you do that. I think only the host can do it, Mayor, yes. so only Anthony. No. But Anthony, I would definitely recommend that the PDF only is there, not a Word document for... Yeah, why don't you... Uh, can you convert it to PDF and then post it? I'm not seeing a place to attach a document to the chat spot. Um, In the past, uh, uh, Chris D'Amato has been on our, on our console meeting calls. I wonder if Chris D'Amato might be able to weigh in. Let's see if I can get it here. I will try to copy it and just paste it in, in here and see what happens. It's kind of long. Oh. If, if that's too long, maybe just the bullet points for people. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, because there's, I know if you look in the chat, there are some comments there. Let's see. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, I did see uh, while you're figuring that out, um, Jessica, can we unmute her and let her? Yeah. Yes. I will. There you go. I see the bullet points now in chat. Yes. Not, not too bad. Jessica is unmuted. Okay. Yeah. Jessica. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. I want to first thank all the councilmen and women for uh, diligently giving of your time and the mayor as well. I'm here to urge uh, our town to reach out to the governor to come up with a plan to let our small business, specifically the salon industry, um, open up in some capacity. There's a lot of incongruency when it comes to 
what is essential, what's not essential, the amount of people that are gathering at places such as Walmart, Target, um, a lot of open areas outside. We follow very strict guidelines from the Division of Consumer Affairs, which I don't think a lot of people are aware of, the typical consumer. And with that said, we can be um, inspected unannounced at any time with, they could just show up in my business. So we already have these guidelines that we follow from the Division of Consumer Affairs. With that said, we can put in place uh, taking their temperature. We have a waiver that we're gonna send to clients prior to their arrival that they will fill out. Are they our regular client? Which that's what I'm suggesting that we take our regular clients, not from any other areas. Um, and uh, have their temperature taken when they come in. We will be cashless, so we will not accept cash. And I believe that we can do this in a manner that can take care of the essential workers as I'm getting multiple calls and text messages and emails, um, 30 to 40 a day. And people really need to be taken care of. It's not something that, uh, you know, a, a, somebody that's not professional can actually cut the hair. It's a bodily function. It grows, it's, it's an unsanitary, um, act to think that people don't have to get their hair cut. So I would um, ask that if you can please, you know, whatever uh, outlets you guys may have to reach out to our government to get us approved in this area, right in our small town. I think that it can happen. They're starting to open up other towns. We are not like North Jersey. We don't have to allow other people from the other towns to come into our town. Um, but again, we do follow the guidelines from the Division of Consumer Affairs and we can open up at a 20% capacity. Um, I'm proposing perhaps a test force that gets together of um, salon owner and the health department to put together a plan so that we can be able to take care of our clients who are in desperate need of you know, feeling good and, and looking good and keeping their um, health and their sanitary care and, and those needs in, um, in check. So thank you very much. Thank you. Mary, Mary Jane, can I ask um, yeah. that, um, Jessica and any other local business owners, if they have plans that they've developed to send them in to council, it's unclear what role we may or may not have in the opening and setting of guidances from the state. However, I can tell you that we are thinking about it and we're thinking about scenarios. So if there's thinking from our local businesses in regards to what would be good practices, it may help the global cause and how we think of things. Yeah, I mean, specifically for my industry, I'm a licensed professional, so it's very different. I appreciate all the stories to be open in some capacity, but I understand this is a pandemic we're going through. My industry specifically, we are licensed professionals, licensed to touch, like doctors, like nurses. So with that said, I will absolutely send in, um, you know, what protocol we have in, thank plan you. Uh, in place. Yeah, and uh, thank you also. I mean, a nice article in the paper, I think you're bringing a lot of attention to this issue. So. Yeah. Thank you for uh, reaching out and being the spokesperson on this. Thank you. Um, okay, I believe uh, Michael Marcus was the second person that wanted to speak. Yeah, he's, uh, he's unmuted. Okay. Yes, good evening, uh, Mayor and members of the council. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, my name Bye. is Michael Marcus. I'm an attorney with the law firm DeFrancesco Bateman and Warren, and we are the attorneys for the borough of Far Hills. And uh, as such, we are familiar with the, uh, the litigation regarding the old Quarry Road. And um, we, on behalf of the borough of Far Hills, uh, just want to express um, our previously expressed uh, position on the matter that um, the borough of Far Hills objects to um, truck traffic uh, from the quarry uh, traveling uh, uh, south through Far Hills and that we have um, advised uh, the county, we've advised uh, uh, the borough of uh, Bernardsville and we've advised the NJDEP of our position uh, that um, the uh, borough of Far Hills would request that all truck traffic and that the preferred truck route should proceed north through Bernardsville rather than south on 202 through Far Hills. And uh, I know that uh, Mr. Pigeon uh, is aware of that uh, request on behalf of the borough. He's had conversations with um, Mr. Sordillo, who is the regular attorney for the borough 
uh, regarding this matter. And we just wish to, uh, again, um, make that position known to uh, the mayor and council. Uh, we would hope and ask that that be uh, made a part of your settlement uh, or potential settlement of the litigation uh, with you know, litigating that matter. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, Jack, you are aware of this, right? I think we had a, a letter on the part of his position since day one. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank That's you. Uh, I have Alex Solano next. He's unmuted. Hi, thank you, Mayor. It's Melissa Provost. Oh, <laughs> Alex had a okay. Zoom call for school today. <laughs> All right. Um, I just wanted to um, put a request in before you and before the council that I had previously emailed to you. I live at 42 Garibaldi Street, which is at the corner of uh, Liberty Road. And um, especially during this pandemic, people have um, gone outside and exercise, walking, walking their dogs, walking their kids in strollers, biking, and it's become increasingly dangerous for um, the folks who live in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. especially the kids, because of the uh, amount of traffic, the car traffic that goes through, and especially the speed with which they drive through there. Um, so uh, a number of other towns, including Seattle, which is now permanently closed roads, um, in order to um, motivate people to get out and to uh, engage in passive recreation. Um, and what I am proposing is that there be at least a street or two in our neighborhood closed so that our residents can walk and bike and run um, safely in our neighborhood without the fear of um, being hit by a car. Um, I understand that there may be a concern that this would actually increase the number of people um, who would be getting out. I disagree. Anyone who's been out in our neighborhood on a nice day would know that there are a lot of people out. The only thing that it would do by closing the street for a couple hours during the weekends would decrease the likelihood that somebody gets hurt in our neighborhood. So I would just like you to consider it, um, especially with no end in sight um, to our stay at home orders, or at least for the next 27 days at this point. Um, but it's just a small measure, and I think it would mean a lot to the people who live in our neighborhood and would really encourage them to get out and to continue exercising while practicing their safe social distancing. Okay, uh, thank you, Melissa. Yes, I, I got an email from you, and I think uh, one or two other people with the same request. So um, I know I had reached out to Chief Valentine. Um, I think his concern was that it would encourage people congregating, but... Um, I don't know. Any uh, other council people have an opinion? Uh, I, I think we need a global plan to encourage things to open up safely. And part of that means thinking differently. Um, I know later tonight we're going to talk about potentially maybe closing Mill Street or, or maybe making it, you know, a singular direction. I, I think a global discussion about how do we make this town um, more amenable to this current condition is warranted. Or resident um, and I, I hate to jump in. I mean, I know it's difficult with everybody talking at once, but I reached out to RideWise, the Somerset County team, and um, waiting to hear back from her on some ideas as far as what can we do uh, to, to maybe accommodate some requests like this. Other towns are doing it not in Somerset County, but in other areas of New Jersey, it yeah. would allow for more spread and to have more room to provide six feet for everyone. And we could do it in a similar way that the state did it, where it was, you know, the no knuckleheads, I guess is what most people heard. So that if we do one and it turns out okay, then we can continue. But if not, then obviously we can put, you know, Melissa, if um, if no, closing the whole road isn't possible, is making it one way help? Linda sent me a note. So. I, know. She sent it to me too, okay. I don't know. It might just make it more okay. confusing. Um, okay. There's, you know, there are fewer people on the road, but because most people are staying home these days, so people aren't traveling to and from work or to school or shopping on a weekend. So I don't think that it'll hugely inconvenience the vehicular traffic. 
um, any more so than, you know, closing a street for repairs would be. Um, yeah. But at least during this time, I just think it's a safety measure. And there's a lot of other, you know, cities and towns that are taking similar measures. And it's just is to give people a safe place to go outside and, you know, um, engage in their passive recreation, which at this point is really all we have left. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I mean, you could ask Councilman Don Huey lives in, he lives around the corner from me. Uh, most people have actually been practicing social distancing, um, even as the roads around here get a little crowded on a nice day. They really have been making an effort to keep their distance from everybody. Some people wear masks, some people don't outside, but um, it's just to try to keep people safe. Mayor, Mayor so, Coach, um, th this is the first I've heard of it, so we haven't had a chance to discuss this at okay. public safety, but did, uh, did the uh, Chief Valentine say that any other requests from any other roads had been similarly made? Um, I think Garibaldi and Liberty are the two that I've gotten the emails on. Because if we, if we do, we're going to probably have to come up with some sort of global plan, some sort yeah. of inclusion exclusion criteria because other streets will want to follow suit uh, or other neighborhoods may want to follow suit as well. Uh, I'm not opposed to the idea. I think we just have to, you know, come up with a, a, uh, a consistent plan of how to do it. In my neighborhood, if, if, you know, where would traffic go? We don't get a lot, but, you know, we'd have to go somewhere. So whatever the streets weren't closed, we'd probably see more traffic. But, uh, you, know, yeah, you're, you know, like Melissa said, it, it's people riding all the time, walking around. It's been, we all kind of follow the rules pretty well, I think. I mean, Jeff, can this be referred into into the safety committee without taking months? I mean, this is something, you know, we've been talking about how to create expedited plans to, to create decisions to get things back. Yeah, now, um, well, now that it's forward, I mean, the, 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 the beauty of uh, the beauty of what we're, I guess, with the silver lining, I shouldn't say beauty, the silver lining where we're in is we can have Zoom meetings uh, or conference calls at any time. Um, and uh, Councilman Donahue and Councilwoman Zamara are on the committee, so we could take this up pretty quickly. Um, you know, like when, when I'm walking in the Olcott Street area, um, I, I see a lot of walkers as well. So, I mean, I could, I could visualize how other streets will want to follow suit, other neighborhoods will want to follow suit. Yep. So we'd have to, we'll have to. Uh, it's either at the bottom of the screen like that. I would be in favor of that, Jeff. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I think so. Can we ask um, public safety to get on it right away? Gonna maybe get a meeting done uh, this yeah. week to Do our best work it out. That yeah. was great. Thank you. And, and Jeff, to your point, you know, identify what we would call high residential density communities like that, where this type of a plan could. Yeah. Be well, the, 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 obviously, the big concern, which was touched upon by by Councilman Donahue, is that. Uh, what we're going to do is shift the traffic to other street nearby streets yeah. and so w w that becomes the safety concern we'll have to make sure that uh, there there's a, a plan for that well and, and we also have to think about the people that live on those streets directly in addition to the oem volunteers that might be um providing services for um people on the street like you know going shopping for them or getting their prescriptions whatever it might be well i think um the article from Seattle, I think, Melissa, that you shared, um, it allows for residents and vendors, you know, uh, delivery people to come. It's really just cut through traffic that's not allowed. And um, I've, I've noticed, I don't know if anybody else has, but the less people are traveling, those that are traveling are going faster because there's a lot, you know, there's no traffic. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, I think if uh, public safety can take that up and come up with a safe way to make that happen or rotate streets or whatever, um, thank you for bringing that up and we'll get on it. Thank you, Jane. Is that something that has to come back or is this something that in, in the spirit of expediency that they can make recommendations and move forward quickly or does this have to come back for no i think uh public safety can take it to the the chief and if uh oem okay. and the chief are good with it uh we can let it happen i'm comfortable with that approach i am too and if it means a resolution tonight i'm willing to pass it yeah, yeah. No, we, we uh, council i mean <laughs> mr pigeon what's your thought on that do we have to keep come back if we if we start closing off roads you're you're muted Jack. Well, yeah, it's kind of like um, the concept of um, if you were going to have a, a street closing for a block party, you have to get a permit to that for that, don't you? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it would have to go back to the council. Okay. Unless we resolved it tonight, right? 
Well, I don't know if we're going to do that. I don't think we can. No. Yeah, I think some thought has to go into it as far as how and where the traffic would go. But I, I like the concept. Jack, I mean, uh, Jeff, can you think you can get it back to us in two weeks? Yeah, well, listen, it's, the rate limiting step is going to be Chief Valentine. And, um, you know, we'll, if, if he's agreeable that, that we can come up with something, we'll come up with something. If he's not agreeable, it becomes a hard stop. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Chief Valentine. <laughs> I mean, in two weeks is, you know, that's after Memorial Day at this point yeah. is our and next could, meeting. If you know what, yeah, we could, but, um, if I could just jump in here, if necessary, if you can work on that this week. We yeah. could do a, a, couldn't we do an, an 8 a.m. council meeting for this one issue or? Yeah, I was just going to suggest we could have emergency meetings. In fact, that may be the, the way of the future is that we have much yeah. more, more emergency meetings. I think what we're really doing is planning for the future. I mean, if uh, if things really stay tamped down and um, the, the powers that be at the state level on June 7th uh, release the, the uh, state of then this becomes a moot point. But if things get worse, like happening in California, um, uh, Benagra? Benagra, yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm hitting unmute. Nothing's happening. Let me try again. Did you mean? There oh, we yeah. go. Okay, go unmuted. Hi, no. my name is Lynn Benegra. Um, okay. And I live in Burnsville and I, I just, um, my comment is regarding the dump. I was not supportive of the dump and I guess I'm a little caught off guard given the fact that uh, this information was posted on the bubble when I was looking to see if the meeting was tonight, that it was kind of going in the direction that you were supporting to have the dump. Um, now, previously in the summer when we found out the dump was coming about, um, everybody was kind of shocked. And I think the transparency is an issue, you know, given the fact that, you know, you talk about the previous council making these decisions. And I, I feel like the fact that we found out about this so much time after all the decisions that they made and that there was no transparency. And then, you know, tonight I feel like every person I said, do you know that they're voting on this tonight? And that it was kind of like a, almost a done deal that, this is what you were going to vote towards. Um, I, I just feel like my one issue is just the availability of the information is, is kind of disturbing that, you know, first experiencing the dump being a possibility and then the decision to make the dump be a reality for us. Um, and when I reached out to lots of friends, nobody really knew that this was happening. And I, and I feel like this is kind of a, a shock to a lot of people that are not on board um, for, supporting the dump. So with, with that notion of just being able to let the public, given the response the first time around when there was not even enough room to fit everybody when we could go outside, now we're in lockdown and nobody can get outside. Um, it's, it's a little frustrating to hear that it's so close, close to being a reality because a lot of people showed up at those meetings and a lot of people were very unhappy. And you, you know, you, you make a bigger room to house all these people to come in to voice their opinions, to counteract all these comments that, you know, arguing against it and all the false information that was presented to get approval. Um, with that said, I know it's not a debate, but you know, given the fact that when it was proposed that it was gonna be a possibility that you open it up to the public, that you let the public discuss it. And the fact that you talk about, you know, the legality of it could be the best approach. Again, I think letting people either understand the elements of it because without that, they can't really accept it wholeheartedly. And I know that, you know, I'm sure you've debated it and I'm sure you looked at all the aspects of it, but the public doesn't know it. And I think that that leaves a bad taste in people's, you know, uh, mouths thinking that, you know, it was just decided when there was an uproar and obviously the community was not supportive of it. I, I think it's, it's just a bad approach to passing something when the public is definitely not aware of what's happening. Um, I mean, of the people I reached out to, nobody was aware that this was happening. Okay, I think your three minutes are up, right? Um, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thanks for sharing your thoughts. Um, next, I have Lauren McHale. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. Ah, there you are. Hi. Good evening, Mayor and the Council. I'm on the panel, and I live on. We're having. We can barely hear you. Here. Can't hear. We can't hear you. Better. Yeah. Really. Um. Hmm. That was sounded better. Wait a minute. Is that any better? I don't. That's there good. you go. Yeah. That's good. If I get too close to the screen, you'll see my bad hair. That's <laughs> blonde to open up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I hope this is better. Is this better? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a mother of a senior at Bernard's High School. And the reason that I dialed in, it was suggested by some of you friends of mine in the council. I just am hoping that there is somehow a way to honor the kids as this unfortunate circumstance is taking away so much from all of us in our town, state, country, and the world. I just feel like the kids can at least perhaps be honored some way in our own town, whether it's extra signage or banners in storefronts at the town hall site, just something. And I'm willing to work with the mayor and the council members um, as long and as hard as time permits. I just feel like while we're working to open the state, I'm not sure the governor is going to allow any type of graduation service to date. Um, what the, the Board of Education has told us is that it has to just remain virtual at this time. So if anything can be done to help our seniors that go to the school, I'm speaking for many of the parents of seniors and just of, of kids in the town. We're a small town. We all love one another and each other's kids. So I'm really hoping that we can just make June or graduation day or something as special as we possibly can. Thank you, Lauren. And what, what is the date that was supposed to be graduation? Just a question. Um, the exact graduation date um, is sure. June 19th. Um, and I did, I, Christine uh, Zamara had, Councilwoman Zamara had shared with me and I shared with you, I believe, the what Sparta was doing, you know, and some towns are getting yeah. very creative with what they're doing. So I think uh, we can look into some way that we can acknowledge um, our seniors. That, that would be amazing. That would really be amazing. We would be touched by that. Yeah. Uh, I, I would fully I would fully support something that anything that we can do to help, you know, make up for the, the differences that are occurring this year. If there's something that we can do as a town. I would fully support it. Thank you. OK, um, I'd be happy to be on a committee of sorts or whoever can do that. I'd be happy to be on that and help move something forward. With, you know, with, get, with work with the HSA on getting something that we could do. Do we do we know whether the. The school district is planning anything. I know there have been some districts you've seen them in the news where the uh, the right. principal the principal's going to individual houses and giving the uh, the diplomas to kids. Um, do we do we know whether the district is planning anything? The uh, yeah. actually um, Chief Valentine has been talking to Superintendent Dempsey and they've been working on different scenarios. So I don't know if they've resolved anything yet, but I know they're talking. As of right now, um, they're planning a virtual graduation. They're putting together some ideas where they can um, get some photo clips and some videos of the individual students in their robes and gowns. Um, and they're trying to put together something that you know they can do virtually, which is in line with what the current order is from the state and the Department of Education right now. They're trying to work within the confines of that. We've had some discussion about some ideas and some possible extensions of that, um, that were outside the parameters of the executive order. We found out until today when they, they lightened up a little bit about the definition of a uh, drive by or wave by type of mini car caravan. But again, it had a lot of restrictions associated with it. So, as of right now, there's there's no definite plans. They haven't released anything yet. 
Um, it's yet to be seen. I'll wait to hear from the superintendent as to exactly what their plans are. We'll try to support them wholeheartedly with all of our resources to make this special event as, uh, as good and as exciting and as um, important as it should be. But the reality of it is there are many restrictions on us right now. And until they're lifted, we don't have the authority to um, go outside of the parameters that are set upon us. But we are, we are working together with them and discussing it pretty much on a daily basis as to what's going to happen. Um, is there any way, um, I know that there's a call with the governor, there's a call with the county. Um, you know, I, I feel like our county and our town should be handled differently, right? We've got 180 kids in our graduating class versus Agreed. something in like West New York where my husband grew up with over a thousand kids in his graduating class. You know, they're obviously the governor has the, the state rules, but I mean, maybe there's some discussion that can be had for the, for the level of um, the volume. Of people this discussion talking. is happening over and over and over again every morning at 9 15 on a state call with the uh state police office of emergency management we're on that call every morning there's over 400 police departments represented on this call and there are many small towns and small schools that are going through the exact same thing that we're going through right now and as of right now we're all being subjected to the same uh rules and provisions that are basically in place to keep everybody as safe as possible. And um, we're no exception to the rule. Okay, uh, thank you, Chief. Um, where are we now? It looks like I've oh, got- Howard. Howard Lemberg. Right. I have someone who was having trouble raising their hand. So Susan Horowitz is also oh, okay. uh, one of the hand raisers, but I'll, I'll, I'll unmute Howard right now. Okay. Uh, okay, you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to do is return the discussion to the old Quarry Road Associates agenda item. Uh, and uh, most of what I've got to say is in the nature of uh, questions and clar requested clarification, not, not a speech. Um, it seems to me that if I think back uh, to the headlines and news stories in the uh, Somerset Hills towns that relate to quarries and trash transfer uses and uh, and so forth over about the last 20 or 25 years the ones that i remember uh there's a great deal of controversy there has been a great deal of controversy much of it stemming from the fact that uh, towns seem to have thought that they reached agreements uh but then they found themselves facing uh corporations which seem to have every incentive to try to bypass either agreements or local ordinances uh, because bigger operations are theoretically more efficient and they can also be more profitable. So the nature of the questions that I had are along the lines of uh, to what extent is this proposed agreement with all Quarry Road Associates uh, the end of this story or is it simply the uh, first opportunity that the camel gets to uh, poke his or her nose into the tent, uh, only to be followed by much more in the way of appeals to state agencies, appeals to the courts, and attempts to uh, basically supersede this agreement by going through various other DEP or other state agency permitting processes, uh, in which case uh, we could be uh, uh, agreeing to something tonight which is then overridden by either old quarry road associates or its successors or future owners and so forth so that's that's the nature of the questions that i had uh thank you howard um i don't um jack do you want to can you address any of that Just yeah I'll try on a reasonable to, basis i'll try to answer that this settlement would only involve this the zoning issues uh, so that the old quarry road associates would still have to go ahead and get its EEP permits and BPU permits and things of that nature. Uh, the, I'm not sure of the other questions that was um, anything that struck me. Yeah, do those permit applications um, make it possible for old quarry road associates to then override the the zoning content of the proposed agreement no, no it would not and, and i would like also to point out that their applications uh, to the state all have the same limits uh, that the zoning ordinance does 
So <laughs> again, to, to Mr. Lemberg's point, though, with successive owners, if at some time in the future, Old Quarry Road sells it to another owner, would they be able to overrule it, change it, amend it, or do anything different? No, they would still be subject to the Burnersville Borough Zoning Ordinances. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, I oh, we wanted to let Susan Horowitz, yes. Can we unmute her? Sure. There she is. Yeah, hi. Um, we're at, um, Jeff and I are at 11 Laurel Lane in Bernardsville, and our home is parallel to 202, and then of course the quarry. My concern with one of the bullet points is allowing the truck traffic starting at six o'clock in the morning, um, six days a week. And often when trucks, I mean, we hear the trains, we hear, you know, any noise on 202, and when there's any work and the backup of the trucks, um, that beep, beep, beeping, we're gonna hear it. And six o'clock in the morning is awfully early, six days a week to possibly be woken up to truck traffic. So that that's just something I wanna point out. And of course, we're not the only home up here. Good point, okay, thank you, Susan. Um, I have Peter Barnbaum. Where's Peter? He, he's unmuted. Okay. I'm here. Um, wasn't uh, prepared to be visibly on the call. <laughs> Apologize for that. We know uh, what you look like. <laughs> not the way I look like now. Anyway, um, I am very concerned about the proposed scope of a settlement uh, with the carrier, carding company. It is uh, way beyond what they presented at the meeting because I was there. And um, I was very cautious and concerned about the scope, the impact, first and foremost on the neighbors. And, and of course, uh, after that, the entire town. I am aware of other communities that had all kinds of problems with quarries and dust and uh, pollutants coming out of various processes, uh, having been around <clears throat> these areas for a long time. And I absolutely positively would never uh, consider that for our burners Um Totally out of character and totally unnecessary. Uh, it was a light industrial area. Um, <clears throat> what I have in my notes, uh, I'll recall, is that they said it'd be a very limited uh, operation. The only reason why they wanted to do it was there is a um, shortage of servicers for you know, building projects, whether you're renovating a home or a small construction project in the area. Uh, the carters had to come from a very, very long distance and it was expensive for local contractors in there trying to, you know, use a facility. They had the trucks to pick up some of the, and help fill the void. Um, my recollection is the hours were something like, I'm pretty sure it was a six to eight. Um, <clears throat> and we asked if it would be that or if they were limited to that. They, and the answer was yes. Again, exact hours I, I have to check, uh, but the end, but that's what it was. No Sunday, definitely not Sunday. And if they did anything on Saturday, it would be very limited. Something around like nine to two. Again, um, thinking uh, we or or I was thinking on the council as something that would not uh, encroach on the peace and quiet of the community and not having a lot of trucks. In terms of trucks, they're talking about twelve to fifteen a week. Um, maybe it was 18, I don't recall, but it was like one or two a day. Uh, not a lot, and certainly in context with what they said for being a very low impact, uh, filling a needed void. In terms of materials, absolutely no uh, dust generating type things, uh, no has material, asbestos, liquids, uh, chemicals, industrial waste, and so on. Uh, there would be no dust. There would be probably uh, practically no noise, as it sounded like. I mean, what they're trying to do is scavenge, like wires and pipes and things that come out of a some of the demolition project, <clears throat> so they wouldn't go to a landfill uh, and it would be sold on the recycling market. Truly a scavenger type operation, putting things that couldn't be used, letting it go to the landfill, and things that could be used had value, getting it out of the landfill and using it for a proper purpose. Um, and the hand separation, I believe, was kind of hand. I don't think they talked about equipment because I asked about that. Uh, again, knowing equipment. Um, like, Peter, your three minutes are up. Can you just finish your thought? We'll try and, um, to, yeah. So they presented something very low impact, 
um, very limited scope. Um, it, it's extremely annoying. And I think probably in, in, in light of what um, Howard was just saying is creep and expansion uh, really violating our trust. And um, if you need me to testify on this, if you decide to go to court, I'm happy to do it. And I will try to find any notes that I have. Uh, if I can read them, they're all yours. That this is a uh, disgraceful uh, bridge of our trust and good faith. Thank you, Peter. You're welcome. Um, Thomas Pagel, did I say that right? Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Mayor. Yep. I'm now unmuted. So thank you uh, for your time. You did say the last name correctly. Yes. And uh, I, I will not, I will not take the three minutes allotted, but I would just like to, as I listen to the conversation, just build on Mr. Birnbaum and Howard's comments. And, and look, as you opened up the discussion about this, um, I think we all appreciate the transparency in which the council is trying to act at the moment. And I think that that is, that is a great step forward, but the reality is at the time we find ourselves right now, uh, we all have a lot of distractions and a lot of things going on in our lives. You opened up the discussion around the quarry and we immediately went to salons and then we started talking about high school graduations. And so I just question if we are in a position to actually have a discussion, not a debate, but a discussion about this, because it's obvious that this is a pretty polarizing issue that stuck around for a while. And even if, you know, the, the uh, letter was written in 2015 and, and we can't move past it, I do think that in order for the borough and our residents to feel comfortable with it, it probably is worth a little bit more discussion. Uh, so I would just ask if there's a time sensitive nature to this, can we continue the discussion as a community? Uh, and I will leave it at that. So thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Uh, Carrie Hazelton. Where's Carrie? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, congratulations on your recent appointment to, uh, was the Highlands? Which one was it? Uh, I'm on the uh, Raritan Headwaters. Headwaters, that was yeah. it. And and the Somerset County uh, Open Space. Yeah, the Open Space. Yeah, yeah I'm getting all involved in uh, all kinds of Open right. Space issues. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, tonight, I just wanted to make a quick statement about, or ask a question to get people thinking about this agreement on the transfer station. Um, I can see it's a carefully worded document, but my concern is that whatever parameters we put in place in an agreement, who is ultimately going to be responsible for monitoring the compliance? Us. And, and do we have the manpower? Do we have the ability to see that um, the applicant stays within the limits that we set? I would say we, we just don't have the time to do it, and it is important because ultimately what's to stop them and who's to stop them from exceeding the limits that we set upon uh, the work that they wanna do. We're just not gonna be able to watch it. And I think it's just going to, it's going to snowball. That's the feeling that I have about it. And so that's all I wanted to say about it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Um, Jack, can I just ask you a question on this? Um, sure. There is, the state does inspections as well, yes? Yes, as I understand it, once a month, the state inspects and under the proposed settlement, the borough has the right to inspect at any time. And do we I think the exact language is that the state has the right to expect up to a frequency of once per month, right. but it's not guaranteed that it would happen every month. Agreed. But, but we can go in any time. Yes. And who would do that? Would it be like our engineers? It would be whoever the council asked. Probably the engineers would be the best qualified. Yeah. Okay. Thank but you. But we're not going to have anybody able to stand there with a clicker counting the the trips in and out, and and you know, on an ongoing ad infinitum basis. And that's we've, we've talked about doing that. Um, look, we we can't do that every day, practically. Right. Of course not. We've talked we've talked about doing it um, at random days. We've discussed a couple of different mechanisms. Um, because I think everyone on the council believes if, if we vote to do this, um, enforcement is going to be important. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Carrie. Thank um, you. Kevin Canberg. Hello. Yes. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Hello. Uh, 
Uh, my name is uh, Kevin. I live on uh, Brookside Avenue. And just on behalf of uh, my wife and I, we just wanted to uh, add comments that add to comments that have already been made regarding the, the waste transfer facility, particularly around compliance. Um, you know, some folks have already raised a similar issue, but allow us to respectfully pile on. Um, you know, we're a small town. I, I, I question whether or not we have the resources to effectively monitor these these guarantees uh, that they've given us. Um, you know, if we if we already are kind of not understanding the feasibility of clicking to watch traffic or to you know make sure that they're not operating outside of their hours, you know, it really could spiral very quickly and become ugly. So you know, just if there's any room to negotiate or there's anything to focus on, I, I'd be much less concerned personally, my, both my wife and I, about the financial benefit of the town, which seems relatively small, mm -hmm. than these quality of life issues. We have mm -hmm. to have a plan in place uh, to make sure that, that you know, this, this, this group, if they're coming in, that, 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 we, that they maintain compliance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank Jack, you. Jack, Jack, can you- We just said, uh, can we ask- uh, Jeff, 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 hold on. Yeah, time. Real, real quickly, if they were found to be out of compliance, what would be the consequence or sanction for them? That was my question too. Okay, question. great minds, Jeff. Yeah. We, we would have to go back to court and file a petition in aid of litigants' rights to enforce the settlement agreement. Yeah, that's great. We're never gonna do that. No, I, th I think there would be will to. I think so. Um, but, but isn't there a provision that within, I think, the, a certain time period that if they fail to live up to the agreement that the that um, the, the settlement is void? Yes, we'd have to go back to court to, to accomplish that. Void, yeah. That would be they would be, to do so. Not yeah, going to be so. They would, they would be violating the agreement. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm, am I still, am I still open? Uh, uh, yes. If I, if I live in the vicinity of the quarry and, and they're operating at say five in the morning, who do I call? Good question. I call the that, that would, I, I'm gonna, I, I know Jeff is on on the call, you know, self-reporting from residents for any kind of violation of ordinance would go directly, I believe, into Jeff's office. Is that correct, that's Jeff? Correct. Jeff Price, that's the, our, zoning, our uh, zoning enforcement. Yep. I believe if I'm still on that, um, we would have to have an arrangement where there is an automatic enforceable fine by the borough because otherwise we've seen too many times when people that have certain privileges or whatever uh they exceed them and without having an immediate recourse i just don't see yeah that it serves us at all okay. um, all right thank you kevin was thank you very much okay anthony would you mute people that aren't talking just because there's some okay. background noise thank you Sure, I, I, gotta just, I, I gotta just go through all the four pages, but I'll get to them all, sure. Okay. Um, John Oliveira. Sierra, did I say it right? John. Yes, He's on. Got it. Oh, there you are. Okay, we got you. Hi, good evening, how are you? Um, you're a little faint. Can you speak louder or get closer? How's this? That's good. Much better. Hi, good evening, how are you? Good. Uh, so uh, thanks for giving me a moment to uh, speak on on the matter of the quarry. So I live on Chilton Street, Upper Chilton, I think we call it. Uh, I've lived here for over 20 years. I'm well acquainted with what goes on in the quarry in terms of noise and pollutants. Uh, being the victim of that noise and pollutants, and I've had to call the EPA and the town, the police several times. I have meters for noise, et cetera. So I know I'm going to get noise because that's just the physics of the problem. That's the the the, the walls, the way they reflect noise and sound, uh, it's just going to come uphill. So, uh, of course, I'm concerned. And it sounds like uh, this council uh, has shared some of those concerns and says the decision that was made uh, last summer. Um, it seems, though, that we are have some uh, concern or the issue is, of course, the previous uh, actions taken and how we unwind those if we could, right? Um, and that's perhaps where um, some transparency would be helpful to at least understand what, what the roadblocks are. Um, and I, I'm not an attorney, so I don't have too much to go on, so I can uh, speak perhaps to a, a use case. Um, and so the things that come to mind is, you know, this permit that we're considering uh, giving, uh, is, is, is it a permit for all eternity, right? You know, they can have be in the quarry for all eternity, or there are some means 
to at some point expiring that permit. Um, and does it, the town does the town ever right to change zoning laws um, at some point, right? And and if we were to litigate this, what is our liability? So there there's one case that comes to mind, and that is when uh, a nuclear power plant was built on Long Island. So uh, that builder had permits, the federal government can permits the nuclear, nuclear regulatory commission, et cetera. And then the public became concerned after they had a license to operate. And so the public voted to uh, not allow this. And so of course the government had no choice but to uh, compensate the utility who had built it. But in this case, in our case, what has uh, this uh, vendor uh, built? Have they built any buildings? What is their loss? What is our liability? Is it just their planning, their architects fees or, or their engineering fees? I don't know. And knowing a little bit more about what our liability is and why uh, would be very useful. Thank you. Uh, thank you, John. Where are we? Yeah, uh, Kate is next. Kate, yes. I don't have a last name on Kate. No. Oh, hi, sorry. This is Kate Mortensen. I live on Overly Road. Ah, okay. Hi. Um, I just, my question was what a couple of us were asking in the chat. What is the status of the DEP approval? I know that there were a lot of townspeople that wrote the DEP, and I also know that that wasn't necessarily um, completely curious about what the status is and how does that affect everything that we're talking about. Thank you. Um, Jack, you want to take that? Yeah, as far as I know, the DEP applications are still pending. Uh, that's a totally independent issue from this, that the borough would be granting zoning approvals. Uh, the state could still deny uh, DEP and DPU permits, although from speaking outside council, I understand the possibility that it happening is remote. And how <clears throat> do you know how long that process takes? Because it seems like it's been. I, I, I don't. I know part of the problem was their application was incomplete, so they had to supplement their application. Uh, one, one other response is that zoning approvals run with the land. Uh, so they, they go forever, but the property owner can't expand or intensify the use beyond that permitted in the zoning ordinance. Permits issued by the state, on the other hand, can have terms, you know, specific terms of years. Okay. So in other words, something, they could not renew a permit if there was a violation of some kind? That, that would be up to the state, depending on the, the right. degree of the, the offense, yes. Okay. I would also echo my concern about who do we go to if there are issues and how is that, you know, the expense of doing all of that for the town? having to stay on top of this. Um, <clears throat> that's, we have uh, our zoning enforcement officer, uh, Jeff Price, and that's, that's his job. <laughs> so um, any kind of zoning um, yep. infraction, he's, he's the guy that has to see to it. And he does a good job. Okay. Um, and that's, uh, he's in, if you want to do it in person, he's in the, the uh, offices under the library. That's where the zoning office is. And I think you can find his number on our website too. So if there's anything uh, you wanted to report for any kind of violation, that's who, we, who you'd call. Um, I have Jeff, is that Jeff Horowitz or Jeff? Yeah. Can I speak? Hi, yeah. uh, hi everybody. Uh, first of all, I want to, remind everybody that this council found itself in a difficult position on this uh, waste uh, facility and um, I think they moved fairly aggressively to limit the operation. Um, I guess to some extent we have to acknowledge that there's limitations of what they could do. There were some legal problems with the position the, count, uh, the town found itself in. Uh, I do have a concern about enforcement though because um, as everybody's work with zoning enforcement in town knows that getting the zoning laws enforced is not simple and, and nor is it quick. Uh, and the other thing is that the worst thing that can happen with a, uh, uh, for the property owner is that he gets the uh, court issues a cease and desist order. So uh, he, there's no penalty for him uh, going forward. And I wonder whether in the settlement, uh, the trust tests the good faith of the, uh, a property owner going forward, any consideration was given 
to requiring either a monetary penalty for uh, violations or at least requiring that the um, uh, property owner uh, pay the, the legal costs and uh, fees that are incurred by the town and enforcing the order if, if they lose the case. I mean, there's got to be something more than saying if they have a violation, it's just say stop. That, that's not enough because it doesn't provide a financial incentive for an, an operator bent on uh, breaking the rules uh, to stop this practice. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Um, you know, I didn't see any others. Are there any others here? Yeah, just to clarify, I think uh, to the one point that was made, uh, the uh, if there was litigation brought for non-compliance and the and the applicant was found to be non-compliant, they are liable for future legal fees uh, if they lose. Is that right? They, they may be to enforce the settlement. I'd also like to point out that, like any zoning violation, it can be summoned to municipal court and it could be fined $1,500 a day. Uh, one thing the settlement does is give us a second option to enforce the settlement agreement in the superior court. You know, if, if that's the case, uh, Jack and, and, and Councilman Day, we want to make it clear to the community. I have a, a little bit of concern uh, as some of the other uh, uh, speakers addressed that this came up pretty quickly. Uh, and um, uh, we want to be perhaps give the community another chance to comment on that. And if we do, we want to explain, I think it would be helpful to explain what the town's remedies are if there are violations. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Um, I, oh, wait, I see Kevin Valentine raised his hand. Hi, Mayor. Um, yeah, I have a different issue or matter to bring up to you. About a half hour before the meeting tonight, I received a call from a resident who wanted to ask if it would be okay for him to place a banner on borough property honoring all of the essential workers, um, you know, that are currently serving our community. He provided me with a uh, picture about 15 minutes before the meeting of the banner. It's uh, 30 inches wide by 80 inches long. I sent Anthony an email. I don't know if you saw it. I sent you an email, uh, Dr. Hammond, I sent it to you as well. Um, of what the banner looks like. I don't know, Anthony, if you can share that. Yep, I, I can do that right now. Basically, he doesn't know exactly where he wants to put it. He'd like to put it somewhere in the area of Borough Hall, either on the property at Borough Hall, across the street in that vacant lot, possibly in the area of the train station. There you go. He would find a, a good place to um, hang this. He would, he would put it up himself. He's a contractor uh, and you know, he doesn't know exactly where he wants to put it, but, you know, he'd like to move forward expeditiously in placing this somewhere in honor of those in our community who, who serve us. And it's Patrick Riley. He's a uh, oh, local yeah. contractor who's very involved in the borough. He's very involved with the uh, food pantry right now with helping out with uh, delivering food and whatnot. And he just wants to express his appreciation for all the work that everybody's doing. I told him it would have to be brought up before council. He was unable to... Um, attend the meeting tonight and asked if I would, would bring it up. So I don't know exactly what the procedure would be for I, um, doing this. I, I did see it, Chief. Uh, you did send it. Actually, I saw it while we were in the midst of the meeting. Um, I, I think it's very nice. I certainly would have no objection. I like the fact that it's very inclusive, that it doesn't um, it doesn't just focus on uh, the hospital-based workers, but uh, on, on a multitude of people who are involved in uh, essential services. Yeah, he went out of his way to try to include uh, as many people as he possibly could on the uh, on the poster, recognizing that there are a lot more who probably should be there, but then it would probably be, you know, 100 feet long. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. if it's, I think what, it's I would propose, what I would propose is with your consent, we would work with him to find a suitable location where it would not obstruct um, traffic and would, would not appear to be a distraction. Um, but we would need your permission if we were going to do it on borough property. Uh, it looks good to me. Anybody have an issue with it? I think it's a great idea. Uh, as long as, you know, you can find a spot for it. Rest of the council, we okay with that? I like it. Yep. Great. Okay. Thank you. I'll, I'll contact him and let him know. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Man. Thanks, Kevin. Um, okay. I don't see any other hands. There's no more hands. There's a bunch of questions in the box, in the chat box, but I don't see any more hands. 
So. Should we look at the questions in the chat box? Is that? I think if people want to speak that, or if they want to ask a question, they should raise their hands. And um, you know, speak. we can look at them, I think, when we go into executive and. There's one, uh, Eugene Sharp just raised his hand. Ah, okay. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Yeah, hi, good evening. Um, yeah, I guess I was one of the ones asking questions in the chat box, so I guess I'll ask the question um, formally to the to the council here. Um, the, the question the question is, uh, do we have to make a decision tonight? Uh, and if so, or uh, why is there is there what is the risk? I know the attorney has uh, mentioned before or some comments about risk. Um, what, what is the risk, if any, of the decision or vote tonight? um until some point in the future and uh and maybe also if you can answer anyone on the council the question of um what is the risk if we uh, decide not to right now settle um what is the what is the town's exposure potentially thank you i mean maybe i'll, I'll answer the last one um the risk at least is the way that we've been advised by by council and over the period of the months that i've been part of this uh, group is if we go to court um, we've been advised that our chances of succeeding are excessively low. And if we lose, the consequence is we don't have the ability to put the provisions in that we have right now. So it would revert back, at least the way I, I understand it, and Jack, if I misspeak, please correct me, that it would revert back to uh, what was an obtuse uh, agreement in the past. Yeah, I, I agree. We, we've been counseled by outside counsel uh, that our chances of prevailing are remote. Uh, with respect to the timing, these negotiations have been going on for months and months, uh, almost a year now, I guess, uh, in the presence of Judge Miller, uh, and the case is pending, uh, so that if there's not a settlement, I suspect it would be set down for a quick trial, so we really don't have time. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you, Jack. Um, anyone else? I don't see any more hands. Um, I think Kate yeah. has her hand up again. Oh, okay. I, I think, yeah. What else? Um, oh, I see. Well, yeah, we had Eugene, so now Kate. I'm you sorry. Um, in, in light of the, um, I asked about the DEP um, permit, and you said that they resubmitted with more information. Have you seen the more information that they submitted? Have you read the um, changes to their application? I, I don't know that there's changes, and, and I'm not handling it, but it's additional information because their, their uh, application was incomplete. As I, right. I read their original application and I wrote a letter to the DEP regarding yeah. it. I'm curious what their current, is there, do we have access to their more um, uh, like complete application? I, I think there were more technical deficiencies as opposed to substantive. Right. But it, it would be a public record, yes. And, and the borough also sent opposition to DEP. Uh, right. In opposition to the, their application before that body. Okay. And can residents can send letters to the DEP. Absolutely. Recommending yes. that they not approve the permit. Absolutely. It's that, and I just was wondering the new app, the amendments to their original application, where do we find that? You can submit an open request to, to DEP. Okay. Can I clarify, Jack? The, the borough is not in receipt of any additional information that has been sent to the DEP at this time. If it's no. gone to the DEP, we haven't seen any copies of it. Is that yeah, right? That's correct. And, and the Dakota's law firm is, is representing the borough before the DEP as well. And, and anything that we decide would be reflected in any use that they would be permitted by the DEP, correct? That's, that's correct. Not, the the yeah. DEP won't override the borough zoning ordinances. Okay. Um, any other questions? We have one person who's having trouble finding the, the raise hand button, so I'm going to unmute her, and that's Angelina uh, Bruno. So I will find her in the list. Okay. Oh, she's unmuted right now. Okay. Good. Hey, sorry. This is Anthony's husband, John. Oh, okay. Thank you guys very much for the open discourse tonight. Sincerely appreciate it. Uh, I'm curious, and I'm sure a lot of other people are too. Are there any provisions in the town's current road laws? 
uh, or anything that would provide for where the truck traffic going to the quarry would have to go. Uh, and this is in response to the question in chat about how is the town planning to respond to Far Hills request to send uh, truck traffic through a certain route. Jack? Jack? No, and as I understand it, we really don't have any control. As, as long as they don't exceed any weight limit roads, uh, they're free to travel on them. And we cannot control that beyond that, those weight limit restrictions. I guess it would depend on when they leave the facility or when they're coming in, where they're coming from and where they're going to as to which direction they would go. Agreed. Um, so does that mean that residential roads are also in scope of their ability to travel or is it restricted to the main roads, i.e. Mount Airy Road and 202? They could, I, I assume, go on residential roads, but they're going to take the quickest route to get to 287. Jack, uh, Kevin, it, we have ordinances in place that restrict uh, weight limits on most yes. all of our local our roadways. So we have no control over the state or county routes as far as the weight limit goes, but all, all of our local roads have weight uh, restrictions. And I think the, the most, the highest one, I think is five tons. So most of those vehicles would not be traveling on our local roads. Okay. Thank you. Only, only directly to and from the work site is all they would be allowed to do. Um, we have noise ordinances as well, right? Would they apply to the trucks? Probably not during the regular hours that construction is permitted during the borough, which from what I saw in the proposal seems to be pretty consistent with what's already permitted. So our noise, our noise ordinance starts at 6 a.m.? I think it might be 7 a.m., but I don't know that traffic constitutes will, willful noise. noise. I think that would be a question for the prosecutor. As long as they have legal vehicles and they're traveling on, on roads that they're entitled to travel on, the noise ordinance would not apply. Okay. Um, I don't see any more hands. So I, at this point, I will close the public session. I'm sorry. You know what? I don't know how to raise my hand on this. Can I just okay. ask one quick question? Who is uh, that? Who is it's that? Dennis, it's Dennis and Beth McConnell. Ah, okay. All right. What are the sides of the trucks that are going to be bringing the material into the quarry? I guess they'd be all sizes. Yes. I'm not. It, are, we, are we talking tractor trailer size? Can anybody answer that, Jack? Do you know what the, I think it's the. It could be. As long okay. As All right. So my question is, what are you guys doing talking to the uh, the DOT? Because I can't imagine coming off of Mount Airy Road on the 202, because you're talking about the quickest route to 287, or leaving that. And I don't know. Listen, I agree with Bar Hills. I wouldn't want 24 trucks going through my town either. And making that turn uh, on 202 up onto Mount Airy Road. You guys have given any consideration getting the DOT involved that that is going to be an absolute nightmare? Right. Particularly right, around right those turns, time frames. Right, uh, Chief Valentine, right turns onto Mount Airy Road from Route 202 are currently prohibited. There's a truck route that requires that the trucks go up Claremont, turn onto Mill Street, then make a right turn onto Olcott Square and go across. That's not easy for a tractor trailer either but that's the current truck route that's in place. For okay, truck. I've lived in this town for uh, 30 years. What are you gonna do, tell every truck driver that's the way it's gonna go? Uh, I'm telling you, that's what, the, that's what the posted sign says and that's what the regulation is. The other thing that they can do and the more ideal thing for them to do would be to proceed down to um, the Old Mill Inn and then make the right turn and get on 287 down there and not even have to travel up, up Mount Airy Road. That's, that would be the preferred route of travel, but I don't know that. No, but, that but how do you control that, Kevin? That's my I question. I don't, know, I don't know that we can. Exactly. So that's why I'm saying, uh, can't you get the DOT involved and say that this amount of traffic through a town like ours is just, um, that's a reason alone to try to get these guys to, um, for the DEP not to approve it? That goes beyond what I'm, I have not been involved in this process, so I have to defer to Jack Pigeon on that. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's a legal use, uh, we can't prevent traffic going to and from illegal use. 
Well, we had the issue with the um, um, gas station uh, and the TO DOT got involved because there was no way for a turnoff um, or for traffic to go by if a tractor trailer was going into that gas station there. Can't we play the same game here with this to try to get some assistance from the state? And, you know, at that point, you got Far Hills that wants to get involved and help. It's Basking Ridge that gets involved because of the truck traffic, as well as I think Bedminster's involved with this as well now, as far yes. as uh, the truck route. That, there's no reason we can't go to DOT after the fact. This settlement just deals with the zoning as to what happens afterwards is a separate issue. Okay, as a town, though, are we taking a hard look at that? I, we, I'm, sure, I'm sure we will if it presents a problem going forward. The way sure. that they outline the truck traffic in the agreement indicates the exact number of trucks and types of trucks that we're limiting it to. So I don't know if that answers your question, but it was determined by their traffic study person that it wouldn't uh, be a major increase of types of trucks. So it's six packer trucks, three roll-off trucks, and two small compactors. That's what they're removing. No, that's Councilwoman, those are the, Councilwoman, those are the ones that they're not going to be traveling through our town anymore. That's, that's right. the list of ones they're not going to have going forward. Right. And then prior to that, there's a traffic study, and it says the same thing. Packer and roll-off, transfer trucks, and nothing else. So I guess if this question is if it's tractor trailers, the answer is no. Yeah, and there's a limit of what, 100 tons a day? Is that the limit? Yes. Yeah. I think that was really more the focus was the the amount. The size of the uh, truck. The, 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 the tonnage, right. Not the sizes of the different trucks, but the right. overall but tonnage. But the new traffic, it is the tons per day as opposed to the types of trucks. Right, but to Mr. McConnell's point, um, the, the, what they told us is what they anticipate based on their plan were those types of trucks but that plan could change. That That's not part of the settlement. Uh, agreed. They just cannot exceed 100 tons a day. Right. Listen, my point is really that we got to use whatever we can. And, and if it's the DOT getting them involved with that kind of traffic coming through town, if they could help us to knock it down, we should make every effort because um, this, is, this, is, this is not a good thing at all. Yeah, I think you have to understand that none, none of us think it's a good thing. But uh, the, the, the issue at hand is is the zoning which was approved by our then zoning correct me if i'm wrong mr pigeon but by our then zoning board and we tried to rescind it and that's what the lawsuit's about so it isn't about you know dot and safety and all those things it's all about zoning yeah jeff I totally, we can I totally get rescind that it. yeah no i totally get the zoning part and whatever that council did screwed the town by allowing it what i'm talking about is what do we do going forward you're going to give them whatever zoning you're going to give, but they still have to get the DEP to approve it. Correct? I, I think there's a lot of appetite, and I don't want to speak for other members of, of council, but I'll speak for myself because I know that this topic has come off multiple times. It, it, so the, the the question of enforcement, I can tell you that every single person, I'll speak for myself. I don't want to speak for others. Um, enforcement of this is very important to me. Um, and I, I think, you know, if there are other avenues for us to have a more favorable condition, um, that would be very acceptable and interesting to me. Yeah, and I think once you know we get over the zoning issue, I think that's a good point is involving the DOT because we don't want tractor trailers trying to make those turns. And if that yeah. happens, I think we need to have some backup to prevent it. Yep. Um, Carrie, your hands up again. Where's Carrie? Uh, yes, I, I just had a, a point of uh, reference from institutional memory from living on 202 for a really long time. Back in the day when we used to have a much busier asphalt operation and a quarrying operation, I don't know if it was a gentleman's agreement or whether there was something in ordinance, but there was a plan whereby those asphalt trucks were there was a way that they were trying to evenly distribute the load across 
neighborhoods so that some would go south on 202, some would go north on 202, some would use, although I would never suggest that it was a good road to use, Meeker Road. Um, and, and some would use Mount Airy and some would use uh, North Maple. And I wonder if that is something that we could use if we do end up with a, with a transfer station in our town. Um, yeah. Because we did have that. I remember the discussions of that to try to make sure that, that um, certain neighborhoods weren't bearing the, the brunt of everything. You know, Carrie, I, I can, I, one of the things, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, as I observed and, and had part of this discussion, one of the things that this group, and I, I wasn't the lead on this, there are other people really pushing to limit the number of trucks. Um, and I think successfully so. Um, so I know that that's an area that's an active portion of discussion. Okay. Just an idea. I just yeah, know that no, I, in the past, and I don't know what the, what the mechanism was, but I know that it was, it was something that was talked about at council and something that was done. Yeah, yeah no, it's a good point. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Do we have anybody else? No, only uh, one. Mayor, since we have count, since we have Chief Valentine on the phone, do you want to revisit that question about Liberty Road, or do you want to just handle that outside the, this meeting? Liberty Road. Uh, Melissa Provost is oh, yes. question. Oh, no, I, uh, I would do that in committee. Oh, okay. yeah, let's not All do right. it now. We got a lot on the agenda yet. So um, I think, you know, I'd like to hear the whole committee with Kevin together with Chief Valentine. Okay. Um, anybody else? Okay, then I will close the uh, public session. Um, and what we're going to do at this point is go into closed session because I believe our council is here. I thought I saw him on. He is, yes. And just review some of these questions with him and then come back out. Uh, hopefully we will not be in executive session long. What Anthony will do is put those of you who are here back in the waiting room. Um, and then when we're done and the meeting's public, he'll just um, unlock you and you'll be right back in the, the meeting. So uh, hopefully... Mayor, Mayor and, and Jack, is, is there a scope for the, the borough, the council members to make a statement to the public before we go into yes. closed session? I'm just afraid I, we might leave I, people off, you, you know. know. I wanted to do that when we came back because we need to have a discussion, I think, before we come back and give our opinions. That's... I'm just worried that people are going to drop off the call and, and they'll they'll miss a chance. It's enough engagement that people will stick around. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think they're ready to get off the call. But um, I think I'd rather have us talk with our attorney and then come back out when we're ready to take a vote. Each person can state what their, you know, the reason behind their vote or make whatever statement they want. Okay. A little uncomfortable with that approach, but if that's the approach, that's the only approach we're allowed to take. Um, do I have a motion, I should... Executive? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second. Somebody? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Nay. Hi. Okay. Um, so if you you can go get Anthony, something. did you record my nay? Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, I did. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Um, and Bill is here. So if you want to stay in the waiting room, you don't have to sign off and sign back in. You can just leave your computer, go get something to drink, and uh, hopefully we won't be long. 